Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBigCrochet.com and I want to show you how to make the Lion Brand Retreat Shawl. This is by Shari Moore. It's a free pattern on the LionBrand.com website. That information is in the video description below. And this is an easy beginner project. Although I will say that if you're a true absolute beginner, um, you might need a little extra help. I have the video that I think can get you through. Um, and this is a project that works up very quickly. If you're brand new to my channel, I would ask if you would please hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up if you like the project, and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the new offerings I have coming your way. Well, come along and let's go ahead and get started on the Lion Brand Retreat Shawl. For this project, you're going to need three scans of the Homespun Thick and Quick. This is the thicker version of this yarn by Lion Brand Yarns, and I want to thank Lion Brand Yarns for providing the yarn for me for this project. And here are some of the stats on this project. It's 88% acrylic, 12% polyester, um, 8 ounce scans, uh, 160 yards. It's very thick material. As you can see here, you'll be seeing more of this. For this project, I'm recommending a size P crochet hook. Now the size P crochet hooks will have a little bit of a variance um, of the ones out there on the market. Another size P hook, as you can see, which is quite a bit larger, is also marketed as a P, but a 15 millimeter crochet hook. The pattern calls for a 10.00 millimeter crochet hook. The one I'm going to be using is 11.5, and I know this is really confusing, but all this to say, all you need to do is find one about this size and see if you like the fabric that is crocheted, and definitely check using a tape measure um, so that you can see that you are going to be within gauge for this project. You're also going to need a yarn needle, and as always, I recommend that you have a pair of scissors handy. If you go to the Lion Brand site, I will have that link in the video description below, you can actually print out a free pattern um, courtesy of Lion Brand Yarns, and you can work right along with me. And this, you will also need at least nine stitch markers. Now, I'm going to be using these Knit Pick clips that are available from uh, Red Heart, Coates & Clark, and I will put the link in the, in the video description below for these. You don't have to have these per se, but these are real easy off and on and have many other purposes as well. If you wanted to use smaller stitch markers, that would be fine, or even just a contrasting piece of yarn tied to the work is also a good substitute for a stitch marker. So you're going to need at least nine of these. Okay, let's begin. We are going to start with a slip knot. And just after that slip knot, we are going to chain 76. And these are such large chains, I'm going to be chaining in, in groups of three. And just to let you know, once we start working on these, it's just about impossible, as you can see, to see the chains, but have no fear. This is where you use your nerve endings in your fingers, and I can clearly feel each stitch. Okay, so I do have six chains there, so go ahead and work 76 stitches. After completing those 76 chains, we're ready to begin row number one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work three double crochets in the fifth chain from the hook. Now first we have to find the fifth chain and we're going to do that by feeling our way. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth chain. You can't see it, I understand that, but I can clearly feel this with my fingers. Trust me on this. So we're going to make three double crochets. One, two, three. Now this chain four here that we skipped to make this first stitch also counts as a double crochet. After completing those three double crochets, go ahead and give it a chain one. Now we're going to skip the next three chains. One, two, three, and we go to the next chain and we're going to work three double crochets in this space. 
one, whoops, let's try that one, it got away from me, two, and as you can see this project works out really fast, three, and this is going to be the repeat, we're going to do this, what we just did, eight more times, we're going to chain one, skip the next three, one, two, three stitches, and then in the next one, we're going to work three more double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, so we're going to do this until we have eight of these clusters like this across our chain. So again, it's chain three, three double crochets worked in this chain, chain one, skip three chains, and then do it again. So do that eight times. After working eight additional clusters across, let me just show you what I have here. I have the original cluster, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have not chained one yet and you don't need to chain one because this is where we're going to do something a little bit different. Now we're going to skip the next five chains again using my fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And in the next chain, we are going to work three double crochets. One, two, and three. Now we're going to do something kind of important here. We're going to put just a little stitch marker right here. I'm going to just use my little knit clip if I can get it open. Uh, there we go. And I'm just going to mark that little space there. That's just going to remind me that when I get to this space that I'm going to do something different. This is going to be the center of the shawl. So now from this point for eight more repeats, we're going to chain one, skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, and then three double crochets in that next chain. So go ahead and do that eight times. And don't forget that after you do the chain, I'm, I'm sorry, do the three double crochets, you are going to need to chain one in between those clusters. So go ahead and work eight more of these. After working this all the way across, you should have one chain left. Go ahead and work one double crochet in that last chain. This will make it match the other end. Now we are going to turn, but before we do, you need to make sure you have 18 of these clusters, counting this as one as well. So you should have 18 clusters, and don't forget the one with the stitch marker. This marks that you don't have a chain one in between this. And you'll now we're going to turn to begin row two. We're going to start by chaining four. One, two, three, four, which again counts as three double crochets, counts as a double crochet, and the one extra chain as a chain one space. So that chain one space was also right down here from the foundation chain. So we're going to start by working three double crochets in this space. And what we're doing now, we are going to do for not just row two, but rows two through 11. So we're going to be doing this for 10 more rows. Okay, now we're going to chain one and we're going to work three double crochets or work the cluster in the next chain one space. Notice that we're skipping the cluster, which makes this working with this yarn from this point on much easier 
than row number one. If you can survive row one working in that chain and I think just feeling your way through like I showed you, this does make this project very easy and doable and it's quick as well. So we chain one and skip this cluster and again working in this chain one space which is a huge space, three double crochets. We're going to do this all the way across until we get to our stitch marker. When we get to our stitch marker, I'll show you what to do at that point. Now that we have arrived at our stitch marker, we are actually going to skip this space. There was no chain one there, but it's really hard to tell with this yarn, but the stitch marker is going to help remind you that do not put a cluster there. We're going to skip over these two clusters and that space and do a cluster of three double crochets in the next chain one space. And I'm going to show you what you're going to do for the following um, rows after this. I would highly recommend that you take this stitch marker out and mark the next space. You can mark it with anything. I just happen to have this knit clip here. If you even have you know, just a piece of contrasting yarn, you can just tie a little bow there. Just anything that will remind you that you do not want to work in that space. And then just continue this all the way across with your chain one and then working three double crochets in the next chain one space. So go ahead and do this until you get to the end and I'll show you how to end the row. Once you get all the way to the end, to that turning chain and the chain one space, we're going to chain one at the end of this cluster and then work a cluster, which is three double crochets, a chain one and another double crochet in that space. So this is what you're going to do for the next, well, for rows three, four, three through 11, you're just going to repeat row number two. I'll go ahead and get you started. We will turn, chain four, one, two, three, four. And remember that the first chain one space is right here. So go ahead and work three, double crochets and then a chain one and then begin working in those chain one spaces all the way until you get to the stitch marker and when you get to the stitch marker you're going to skip this space and then I'd go ahead and move the stitch marker to the to the other space uh, where you do not put a chain one remember that and then Work it all the way to the end, the repeat of the three double crochets and chain one. And then you work in the last space here, you work a three double crochet cluster, chain one, and a double crochet. So go After working the first 11 rows, this is where we started down at this row. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows. And this is what the edge should look like so far. Okay. And then of course, all the way over, let me show you what the center looks like. I will show you a, you know, a better, better view of this once we get close to finishing. And the other side should parallel that. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to our perimeter rounds. Okay, now we are getting ready to work across the short edge. The short edge is the edge that has the row ends. Okay, and it is, is this edge of the shawl. Now I've gone ahead and the instructions were to place a stitch marker, and I'm using these uh, knit pick things, knit clips, um, stitch marker at one corner and then at the other corner of the short end. 
and then you're going to put seven stitch markers evenly placed throughout. Okay, I've already done that. So now we are going to start reading our instructions under the edging section. And after do that for row one, we are going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And this is continuing from the last, uh, from row 11. And this is the last row that we worked. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this first corner marker because we know where we are that this is the corner. And the instructions are to work a treble crochet. Make sure you're wrapping that hook two times um, for these trebles. I actually made the mistake of only wrapping it once a couple of times and the stitches do look much shorter with this particular size hook and yarn. After that, go ahead and chain two and then work another treble crochet in that same place. Okay. So you end up with this. Now, after you do that, we're going to chain one in between these clusters, okay? Now we get to the first stitch marker, which is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And we're going to work a treble crochet, a chain two, one, two, and then another, wrap it two times, another treble crochet. Okay, so you're kind of like making V's in the place where the stitch markers are. But don't forget you're going to chain one in between these V's. Okay, so get to the next stitch marker. And working a treble crochet, chain two, one, two, and then another treble crochet. And that is what we're going to work all the way across along the short side, which is the row ends, and don't forget to chain one in between. So we're going to work this all the way across everywhere where we put our stitch markers. Um, once you get to the corner, I will show you what to do there because it is a little bit different. We have more stitches going in that corner section. After working this all the way across that short end, this is what you should have. You have the corner here, and then we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the V big V stitches. Okay, now once we get to the corner, and I've also chained one at the after I finish those two treble crochets, and in the corner here we are going to work four of these treble crochets with those chain twos. So we work a treble crochet. All right, followed by a chain two, just having a little bit of yarn trouble here, and then another treble crochet, chain two, followed by another treble crochet, chain two, and then yet another treble crochet. So let's stop and take a look at what you should have in the corner. This is just turning the corner. So we're going to work across, across the new edge now, which is the foundation edge. After completing this corner, let's go ahead and put a marker in the center of this corner stitch. You're going to need to have that as a reference for later. Okay, after you complete this corner, make sure that you do a chain one in between. Now we're going to work opposite on the foundation chain and opposite where that first cluster was worked. That's where we're going to put our V stitches. So we're continuing with the treble crochet, 
chain two and a treble crochet. Okay, opposite that first cluster. After that, we do a chain one and opposite the next cluster right here. Work the treble crochet, chain two, and a treble crochet. So go ahead and do that until you get to that marker which marks the point of the bottom side of this. Okay, that brings us to where we had the marker, where the chain five was, and we're going to work the treble crochet, chain two, and another treble crochet, just like we did at the last corner, chain two, and another treble crochet, chain two, and one more treble crochet, and then chain one, because we're going to be moving on to the next V stitch. So this is what you have in that bottom chain five section. Okay, now we continue working opposite these foundation clusters with a the V stitch again all the way until we get to the next corner. So treble crochet, chain two, and a treble crochet. So go ahead and let, let's go ahead and mark the place where we're going to stop because I only had you mark the one side at a time. Now if you have 18 stitch markers you can go ahead and mark both sides at the same time. Let's just go ahead and put a stitch marker in here. This is the other corner that we're going to be coming next to and the other short side which is right here. So let's go ahead and mark the other corner and I'm going to go ahead and just put the seven stitch markers evenly across just like we did the other side so that when we come to that section it'll be easy just to crochet along like we did at the beginning of this row. One other thing I should have had you do is put a stitch marker in that last corner that we worked which was right here so it'd be in that, that chain two center chain two space of that corner just so that we have that marked for the future rows that we're going to work. Okay now we've come to the short side with the row ends and this is the other corner and we're going to do a corner just like we did at the last corner. So let's go ahead and work that treble crochet, chain two. We're going to do this until we have, as you know, four treble crochets. So that was one. Two and chain two, don't forget to chain two in between there. And three, chain two, and one more. Okay, and we're gonna want to put a stitch marker in the middle. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this stitch marker because I know that that's where my next stitch is going. And let's put it right, well, got away from me. Let's put it right in the center, right there. So we have that marked. Okay, so this is where our other marker was. So as we work along this short edge, don't forget to chain one in between these stitches. So we're back to our V stitches. So the treble crochet, chain two, and another treble crochet in that space. And then a chain one. And now we're just going to do that at every place where we've placed our stitch markers along this short edge. So I'm going to go ahead 
and finish this and then I will show you what to do when you get to that last corner. Okay, that brings us to this corner at the end of the short side and we're going to work a treble crochet, chain two, a treble crochet. Now look at this, this is different, just a chain one and then a treble crochet. There's a reason for that, it plays into the next row. So do make sure that you just have a chain one here because we're gonna begin something a little different on the other side. So now after we turn, we're going to begin row two. We're gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And our instructions after that are to work three double crochets into that first chain one space. So we're back to double crochets. One, let's try that one again. Two, and three. And this chain five does count as a treble and a chain one. So now after we finish that first cluster, this is what we're going to do as we go across. We're going to chain one, and in every chain two space, we are going to work a three double crochet cluster. We are going to be skipping the chain one spaces, so do be careful about that, because if you crochet inside those chain one spaces, I think it's going to end up being a bit of a wavy edge. Okay, so uh, three double crochets in that next chain two space, chain one. Now we are going to skip the chain one space here, and working in the chain two or the middle of the V, we're going to work another three double crochet cluster. And then a chain one in between. Okay, so this is a chain one, so we're gonna skip that. And into the chain two, we are going to work three double crochet. So we're going to do this all the way until we get to the first stitch marker. Okay, once we get to that stitch marker, which is the center of that corner, we're going to take that out. And after that chain one space to separate the cluster, we're going to work two double crochets. And then we're going to follow that with a treble crochet. And then two double crochets. And that's what you're going to work when you get to those corner marks. Okay, and then go ahead and mark that treble crochet once you finish. Chain one. And then go back to working in the chain two spaces with those three double crochets. Again, separated by the chain one spaces. So go ahead and work that until you finish the row. Once we get to the end of the row where you have the turning chain space, we're going to work three double crochets. then a chain one, and then a treble crochet. In that last corner at the end of the row. Okay, now we are ready to go on to row number three. We're gonna go ahead and turn. And we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, Five. So after that chain five, we are going to be working three double crochets in that chain one spot, and actually in each chain one spot across. 
So three double crochets, and then we're going to chain one, and then in the next chain one space, which is over here, we're going to work three double crochets, etc., all the way across until we get to the first stitch marker, and I'll show you what we're going to do. The stitch marker, so once we get to the corner, we're going to take that stitch marker out, and make sure that you have a chain one after that last cluster. And working in the top of that treble crochet, we're going to work a corner cluster like we just worked the last row, which is two double crochets and then a treble crochet and then two more double crochets. And don't forget to put your stitch marker back in the top of that treble crochet, just like that. And then just continue on. So go ahead, make sure you do those chains in between the clusters. And then we just are going to continue working the three double crochets in between the chain ones and working the corners just like I showed you. So go ahead and finish this row. At the end of this row, we're going to work three double crochets. This is working in the, the turning chain here. And then a chain one, and then a treble crochet. Let's try that treble crochet again. All right, so that's the end of row number three on the edging part. Okay, now for row number four, we are going to chain one. This should be a pretty straightforward row, chain one, and we are simply going to work a single crochet in each stitch all the way across, in each stitch and in each space. So a single crochet in that first treble crochet and one in the chain space and then one in each, the top of the stitches. And actually, it's I know it's impossible to see, but it's very clear to my fingers where to put my hook. So in case some of you are afraid that you can't do this, it's actually easier to feel it than to see it, obviously, but it's very easy to feel these stitches since they're so large. So we're going to do this all the way to the first corner. Now when we get to the first corner, which is, or one of the points right here where the treble crochet is. And for that treble crochet, you're just gonna put three single crochets in the top of that stitch. So go ahead and work this all the way across and don't forget single crochets in the chain one spaces as well. So go ahead and work that row all the way across. At the end of the row, we're gonna work a single crochet for the chain and then we're gonna work another single crochet right there at the top of this chain which represents that treble crochet and then we're going to fasten off just give it a chain give it a pull and get our scissors and cut a nice generous strand there and go ahead and pull this on through now I'm going to try to show you how to hide the loose threads. I'm going to try to thread this into my into my yarn needle and we'll see if I can get it to fit. Yay, it worked. All right. So now we are going to simply hide these strands and you're going to want to try to keep, you know, the like the this particular strand has some blue in it. Try to keep it under under the blue stitches. And fortunately, this is very easy to hide because of the curly nature of the yarn. So if we just pull it through like this, see how easy it is to use that yarn needle? And give it a nice tug. And I think if we just trim it there, close, but not, not too close so that you're endangering, you know, cutting your stitches. And 
that thread is hidden and I have well, I hope you enjoyed making this lovely shawl with me um, if you did please let me know and if you could hit that thumbs up and definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the new offerings coming your way God bless bye bye